Hey everybody, how you doing? All right, so we got 20 minutes to bless y'all with some knowledge, so we're going to go on ahead and kick it off, okay? So I want to start off by asking a couple of questions. Are you interested in learning techniques for hardening container images, minimizing attack surfaces, and, in, and implementing secure container orchestration? Yes. Thank you. With understanding strategies for achieving and maintaining compliance for your Gen AI workloads um, in an EKS environment help you to achieve your strategic outcomes in healthcare? Yes. Well, if, these, if you answer yes to these questions, you are definitely in the right place. My name is Antoinette Mills, and I am a Senior Application Modernization Sales Specialist, and I am dedicated to supporting customers like you all and leveraging services like containers and serverless to their fullest potential. And today, I'm going to be joined by my colleague. Hey all, uh, this is Sai, Sai Charanteja Gopalani. I'm a specialist solutions architect with containers as my area of depth. Nice to meet you all. So, for our talk today, we're going to begin uh, by reviewing various use cases for generative AI in healthcare. And we're going to, and leveraging the STRIDE framework, we will explore six the six categories of the framework to discuss the high-level implication of those threats for generative AI workloads. Next, we're going to leverage one use case to walk you through our recommendations of how to mitigate those risks. And then we're going to close out our talk today with some key takeaways. Does that sound useful to you all? Talk to me. I need your energy. Come on. Thank you. So, when we're looking at generative uh, AI uh, in, uh, use cases in healthcare, what we found is that our customers have used AWS HealthScribe to automatically create uh, clinical notes from patient-clinician conversations. We've also seen our customers use SageMaker to jumpstart uh, foundational models or pre-trained uh, FMs from Hugging Face, which can be, um, which can be imported into SageMaker uh, to perform necessary fine-tuning. Additionally, what we see from our customers, uh, they, you all have been using Amazon Pharmacy for Q&A chat box creation using retrieval augmentate, augmented generation. And then we've also seen our customers use open repositories like the Cancer Imaging Archive and Imaging Data Commons to democratize access to large imaging data that can be analyzed using machine learning models. Later, Sai is going to provide you a detailed walkthrough, leveraging the intelligent health assistant use case as a, uh, as a reference. But one important call out that I wanna uh, present to you all is that 94% of executives say okay. it's important to secure AI solutions okay, cool. before deployment, which is why we're talking to you today. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that uh, as we start going into looking at the threat landscape uh, for Gen AI, that we're going to leverage uh, Stride to frame our discussions. So we're going to start this off by looking at the first threat, which is spoofing. And this is basically false authenticity. The implications uh, for, this, for this include model hijacking. Uh, this is where attackers could gain control of the generative AI model and use it for malicious purposes. This includes generating fake content, spreading misinformation, or conducting social engineering attacks. For the sake of time, there, there's some high-level things that you'll be able to access on, on the slide at a later date in terms of mitigation, but Sai is going to go through that in much greater detail during the walkthrough. Okay? So I'm going to kind of fly through these for now. The second threat that, we, uh, that we'll explore is tampering. And this is uh, an integrity damaging threat. And tampering refers to the intentional introduction of malicious data into the training process of the AI model. And this is with the goal of causing the model to behave in an unintended or harmful way. The next threat is repudiation, and this is where the threat entails false claims and manipulations. 
And this is also where model stealing or side channel attacks usually manifest. Next is uh, information disclosure. This may hinder confidentiality. Generative AI models can be vulnerable to data leaks and model extraction attacks. And additionally, attackers may try to exploit these vulnerabilities in the base image or application code uh, in order to gain access to the model or the underlying data. So next up is denial of service. And denial of service is, uh, is, where, res is, excuse me, is where resource uh, exhaustion is experienced by denying service, and it usually happens at the network layer. One key concern is, that, is the potential for adversarial attacks. And this is where an, at where an attacker may try to manipulate the, the input data to the model in a way that causes it to produce unintended or harmful outputs. This could be particularly problematic if the generative AI being used is for sensitive applications, and it can result in disrupted healthcare operations or compromised patient care. And finally, what I'm going to share with you is elevation of privileges. So what ele when we're talking about elevation of privileges, this entails authorization leakage and requires runtime controls. The impact of this type of risk is damage to your organization's reputation and possible legal action. There we go. So now, what I'd like to do is introduce or bring up Sai to go through our more detailed walkthrough. Here goes, Sai. All right. Uh, thank you, Antoinette, for covering the vulnerability landscape. Uh, before we go to the use case, right? So, so Kubernetes is celebrating. 10 years, just four days ago, which is a good thing. And it has vast abilities, potential for different kinds of workloads. One among them is generative AI workloads. And in this case, if we look at landscape for deploying your ML workloads on EKS, it goes from a wide spectrum. On the far right, we have compute that has accelerated drivers in it, whether it be neuron drivers with inferentia nodes or NVIDIA drivers with accelerated compute options. On the far left, for the model, expect model experimentation, uh, we have Jupyter notebooks, which can be run in a shared way, multi-tenant way, or a single-tenant way to build the models. And then the core model development, you can use tools such as Ray, which is an open source distributed framework, not only to deploy, but also to scale your ML workloads on Kubernetes. But the key point across these different blocks is the feature layer or the storage layer that we're talking about. At each aspect, there is an interaction with the data flow, and hence the requirement for enabling the data protection feature set that we're going to talk today. Now, let's look at a use case walkthrough. Of all the use cases that Antoinette mentioned for the healthcare industry, one that is garnering more importance or wider adoption is intelligent health assistant. What do we need for a health assistant? The primary thing is picking a right LLM, large language model. Uh, one such large language model we have for the biomed domain is Biomistral 7B. As the name suggests, its base model is Mistral 7B. It can be accessed from Hugging Face Transformers library. Uh, so it is just like any other LLM that you would be using. The best part is it's been trained with the PubMed Central data, benchmarked across 10 different general Q&A, and is multilingual. It can support up to seven languages. So if we were to implement uh, a model, LLM, such as that on EKS, one of the things that we need to start with is a core node group which is, as the name suggests, it's for the core utilities that the Kubernetes cluster needs. In this case, um, a Kubray operator for creating a Ray cluster that is useful for both deploying and scaling your ML workloads. And the 
and then a uh, just in time node scaler like carpenter for creating the infrastructure that is needed to run these ml workloads in this architecture like you see on the right side you have inferentia nodes in the worker nodes ray worker nodes a ray cluster comprises of a head node and worker node head takes the instructions splits across the accelerated drivers that are in the worker nodes so by using carpenter you can have just in time node provisioning especially on the inferentia side of the world uh, to have your inference workloads run on eks um and then uh, these models can be tokenized and load from a hugging face like we discussed earlier and along with that once you deploy this you might want to have an api to expose for your end users to run inference queries on and for that uh, you can deploy a fast api python app and uh, ex and expose it either using an ingress controller like we see in this diagram with a network load balancer or provide a nice ui interface uh, with a web ui tool such as gradio and this is how at a high level you can run an inference workload on eks um this could apply for different kinds of llms in the context of our session today we are talking about biomistral llm okay now tie the, let's tie this back to our vulnerability landscape that antonet mentioned earlier the first thing in the stride framework sure? that we use for threat modeling is spoofing okay then spoofing by itself uh, has this uh, desired property which is authenticity whenever we speak about authenticity one thing that comes to mind is least privileged access so the levers that you have spread across kubernetes levels as well as that of aws level so at kubernetes level you have role based access control by using role role bindings and service accounts using which you can scope what your pod can do and cannot do and at an aws perimeter level uh, uh, i am identity access management with its verified permissions provide you the similar capabilities by tying them these two you can adopt an defense in depth strategy by providing the least privileged access and it doesn't stop there right so once you provide this you might also want constant auditability you might want to have audit logs verified who is doing is the right authenticated authentication behavior that you want that is happening and that's what cloud trail can help you there to get those audit logs the second thing we have is tampering the desired property of tampering is uh, integrity and again when we speak about integrity the first thing that comes to our mind is making sure what we built is what is deployed at the end user by our developers so at kubernetes level uh you can use policy as code solutions like open policy agent or kverno as a tool set to implement and ensure that the image that is cryptographically signed uh either using aws signer or the open source notation cli is what is implemented by our developers at the end and and uh stage and then you would also want to ensure your images are uh, vulnerability free uh by having both programmatic package check as well as the image cv is being checked out and for that reason you could use um either an open source clear based scanning or inspector based enhanced scanning uh to have your image constantly scanned for the vulnerabilities and the third thing we have is repudiation the desired property of repudiation is essentially honest claims so we want to have a trace back mechanism that if if there's a false claim like what antonet was talking earlier um we want to make sure there's a trace that is given to our patient or or the end user in a healthcare industry and you can implement that by having a strong telemetry or monitoring observability patterns uh the recommendation is to ensure you have some some sort of logging driver that can ingest these logs application logs as well as the infrastructure logs into analytics platforms like open search or or whatever you are using in your organizations and at an aws native level we have cloud trail and cloud watch that can append and give you the similar functionality uh with additional features like like insights and uh synthetic that you can leverage and then we have information disclosure uh information disclosure 
essentially have a desired property of confidentiality. So when we speak about confidentiality, especially in the earlier slide, we saw about storage layer being the key part in, in the interaction for your models. Uh, the, the data resides in the pod's persistent volumes, uh, which are created by the CSI drivers. So the key aspect and, and if these models need to access a vector database for further fine-tuning uh, before they give the answer to the end user, um, you might want to have these secrets for the pods that they want to leverage before they talk to their respective vector databases also encrypted. Um, there are different ways to do that, too. At an AWS level, you have key management service and secrets manager that can provide you these capabilities and to mitigate information disclosure uh, issues. Uh, this is a recommendation that you have your secrets encrypted uh, with the envelope protection tool. And then we have denial of service. Um, the desired property about denial of service is availability. So once you hit with the denial of service, you're going to be flooded. Your request will be flooded for your pods, and the availability would reduce. So how do you ensure it's being scoped? This you, you should have preventative measures well ahead, thought ahead. Uh, like in this case, you can have network policies and subsegmentation using soft multi-tenancies with namespaces so that at least when it happens, it can be isolated faster and scoped out. And in an AWS perimeter level, you have tools such as AWS Shield uh, and Firewall Manager that can help you have countermeasures that you can impact at a VPC level. And then lastly, we have elevation of privilege. Um, and this desired property for this would be authorization. And this goes hand in hand with authenticity that we talked with during the spoofing. So to have your um, elevation of privilege also countered, you have to have mitigation measures that you set well ahead of time. Like in this case, you can have resource limits set so that the pod can be isolated faster, or with Carpenter, the node scaler that also gives you a scope of putting resource limit at cluster level, you can have node blast radius reduced. And uh, like Andrew was mentioning, we also need runtime tools to counter it uh, once an issue has happened. Um, so for that, uh, you have tools such as Guard Duty that can do Kubernetes runtime monitoring, and Config that can also give you levers to implement Lambda functions to do automated remediation. With that said, um, the key takeaways from what we have today is um, we saw about generative AI use cases and vulnerability landscape, how it applies to the threat model stride framework, uh, an, ar an architectural pattern reference, and how different AWS tools and the security best practices that you can implement to counter this. Last but not least, uh, we want to uh, refer you to one of our programs called Data on EKS, which would provide you with well-architected blueprints uh, for running both your training and inference workloads on Kubernetes, in this case, EKS. Uh, it also offers different blueprints for analytics, streaming, and other, other types of use cases. Um, and you already have a Mistral 7B instruct model uh, inference pattern that's readily available for you to test today. There are a couple of use cases with our customers that are running inference and training. These are, just to fit in the slide, there are more of these use cases. Um, but lastly, please do reach out to your account teams to engage us and know more uh, about what more than what we could cover in these 20 minutes. If you want to drill down any of these, any of these details, please feel free to reach out to your account teams. And that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for hearing us today. And we'll be available off stage uh, on the right side if you have any questions. Uh, thank you for having us.